So what we do um, in term at a time scoring is we have a query, right? Let's say the query has three terms, T1, T2, and T3. And let's say this is T1, this is T2, and this is T3 in the dictionary. And then you have postings lists for T1, which are a sequence of doc IDs in increasing order of uh, doc ID value. Likewise, you have a postings list for T2 and so on. Now, what we would be storing along with the postings here, firstly, uh, bear in mind that we are talking about non-positional indexes here. So we're not storing uh, another list of positions here. We are storing the doc ID here and we're also storing the term frequency. Okay, so if this is doc ID D1, along with the value of the doc ID, we will be storing the term frequency of T1 in document D1. Here we'll be storing the term frequency of T1 in document D2, assuming D2 is the doc ID. And we'll be storing the term frequency of T1 in doc, uh, doc ID uh, in document D3. Now, you could think of it this way, or you could think of it as uh, not uh, the term frequency, but as the TF-IDF weight of T1 in D1. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if you want to compute if you, if you want to compute the TF-IDF uh, weight, you could either store the weight itself or you could store the two components of that score separately. So you could store the term frequencies here and you could store the IDF. Remember from the first lecture that you store the document frequency in the dictionary itself, right? Because that helps you to optimize uh, what postings list to first operate on for answering a Boolean query. So in the same way, you could think of storing the IDF itself because the IDF can be directly calculated from the DF. You can store the IDF as a single number with uh, term T1 in the dictionary. And then as you are traversing these postings, you can multiply the two. Okay, or if you want to save this multiplication step, you could, uh, you could sort of pre-compute the IDF while you are building the index and then store the uh, so you could pre-compute the TF-IDF by, by doing these multiplications in advance and store the weight itself over here. Okay, I'm going to shut off this recording. Okay, so once you do that, then how do you calculate the score between this query queue and all these documents? Okay, firstly, note that there will be many other terms in this dictionary and they will have their own postings lists. And the documents that could potentially match this query are documents which have at least one of these three terms. Okay, if, if, if I look at a document which has neither T1 nor T2 nor T3 in it, then I know that the score between the query and that document is going to be zero. Right? Why is it going to be zero? Because when I take the dot product of the two vectors, it's going to be zero because the terms that appear in Q1 will have values like one in some comp for some components, and the TF-IDF uh, weights uh, weight vector for these documents which don't contain those three terms will have non-zero values for other terms. Right? For those three terms which appear in the query, the values are going to be zero because the term frequency is zero. And so uh, we don't have to compute the cosine score between the query and those documents. Okay, we can, we, we can only focus, we can narrow down our attention only on documents that are present in at least one of these three postings lists. Okay, so that's one level of narrowing down we can do. Now within this, uh, within these three postings lists, every document here is going to contribute uh, a non-negative cosine score. It's going to have a non-negative cosine score with the query because there is at least some term of the query appearing in that document, right? So the product won't be zero. So what we will do here is we will maintain this array called scores, okay, where in which we are maintaining 
the score between the query and all the documents. So if there are n documents in total, we have n space, you know, an array of size n. And of course, most of these are going to remain zero because we are only going to focus our attention on documents that are in um, the one of these three postings lists. Okay. So when we do term at a time scoring, think of it, think of ourselves as doing this sort of computation. Okay, you have this query vector, okay, which is a column vector of TF, IDF weights, and then you have um, then you have a sequence of documents, okay, and your postings list traversal is going to be exactly like we were doing before. We are going to parse these three lists using three pointers such that we parse the documents in increasing order of doc ID, okay, a global order, okay. So the first document that is going to be the current document will be the document with the least doc ID across the three lists and so on, just like before. But in term at a time scoring, we will take this particular query term, okay, which is, uh, which will just be a one from what we discussed last time, the value will be one, and we will multiply it with, by the way, uh, strictly speaking, this won't be one because when we normalize the query, uh, the value will actually be uh, you know, one plus one plus one divided by uh, the square root of three. Okay, when we, uh, because there are three ones in this query vector. And I'm assuming here that uh, we're using a, we're not weighing the query using any kind of a complex scoring scheme. If you recall last time I showed you this table where the query itself can have a term frequency weight, uh, an IDF weight and um, a normalization component. So let's assume for now that the query is simply, um, you know, this sequence of ones and when normalized, it will be one divided by the square root of three. But actually, if you think about it, normalizing the query doesn't make any difference because that division by square root of three will be common across all these documents, right? So it doesn't matter whether we normalize the query vector or not because what really matters is the relative weights of uh, the relative ranks of these documents. We don't have to exactly calculate the dot product. We just have to calculate the relative ranks. And if we don't normalize the query, the relative ranks are not going to change. Okay, so let's keep them as one, just to uh, keep things simple. So when we do things term at a time, we'll take this one, and then we will multiply it with the TFIDF weight for that same term T1 in the first document, okay, let's say this is D1. Okay, whatever the TFIDF weight is, that will be multiplied here. And recall from last time, what is the score between Q and D1? This multiplied by this, plus this multiplied by whatever the corresponding TFIDF weight is, plus this one multiplied by whatever the corresponding TFIDF weight is, and then we add them together, add the three weights together. So when we do term at a time, what we'll do is we won't generate the score for D1 in one shot. We will generate it one term at a time. Okay, we'll, we are taking the first term of the query and generating the partial scores for all these documents. Okay, we are multiplying this with this and adding the, and putting that value, storing that value into the cell for D1. Then we are multiplying this with this and we are storing that particular value in the cell for D2 and similarly for D3. Okay, so like this, you take the first term and calculate the scores or, or the weight of that term in all the documents in the postings list for that term. And then you add, store those scores into this particular cell. Then when you take the next term, you look up the postings list for that particular term. And likewise, you'll, you'll take the TFIDF weights for all those documents and then add them, add them to the partial scores that you've already stored over here. Okay, some of them may be documents that were not present in this first postings list. In, this, in that case, you'll be adding them to zero because all these values are initialized to zero when you begin. So at the end of this, once you do this for all the three uh, query terms, the overall score between the query and the documents will be stored in this scores array. Okay, and in this particular pseudocode, what they have done is they've done the normalization step 
you know uh, converting the um, scores into their normalized form because I just said that we are storing the TFI DF weights here but actually if you remember when we take the dot product we have to uh, when we take the angle between the two vectors we have to divide by the magnitudes of the vectors okay and the magnitude of this vector d1 will be different from the magnitude of this vector d2 which will be different from the magnitude of this vector d3 so those magnitudes have to be incorporated I told you a few minutes ago that we don't have to worry about normalizing the query because that particular magnitude of the query will appear in the denominator for all these products the dot product between q and d1 the dot product between q and d2 and the dot product between q and d3 but the magnitude of d1, d2, d3 are not the same and so the, the normalization with respect to the lengths of the documents still has to be done and that can be done at the very end okay once you compute these scores you can then uh, divide each document by whatever the length of that uh, document was as uh, you know you could you could have a, another array which sort of uh, maintains the length and then you just uh, take this value divide it by this length and then store it back here so you can do that kind of normalization uh, at the very end and now the scores that you will be you will be left with at the end here will be the actual scores between the query and all the documents and then you just have to take the top case scores among them so is that clear term at a time scoring are there any questions about that so this pseudocode is pretty much doing that you're focusing on one postings list at a time you're taking the first query term and then you're looking up the every posting in that term and then multiplying okay so this is one oh sorry this is this is the TFIDF weight of the term in that document and this is actually one okay the weight of a term in a query I, I said is uh, we can just treat as one and then we are just going to accumulate whatever this value is into the cell for that particular doc ID. Any questions about term at a time scoring? So let's look at document at a time scoring. In document at a time scoring, which is just, you know, it's very similar to term at a time except that you think about it in a slightly different way. You're doing the same walkthrough using those three pointers but instead of doing these calculations term at a time that is you know instead of first focusing on the calculation uh, term at a time you think of it document at a time okay whichever is the smallest doc id among in, in all the three lists that is the document you will examine first okay and as you are examining the document if that document contained more than one of these three terms then the pointers for the, uh, the then the pointers would be pointing to the same doc ID in all of these three lists okay let's say there was a particular document which had all three terms in it then in this pointer walkthrough all three pointers are going to hit that doc ID together okay by definition this is how we were doing merging earlier also so we will be looking at we can treat this walkthrough we can break this walkthrough into series of steps where we are looking at one doc ID at a time okay, and, uh, possibly in more than one of these lists and then when we are focused on one particular document we can compute the score between the query and that document by doing these three multiplications and the additions together okay and then storing that final value whatever that final value is into this cell and then we'll move to the next doc IDs calculate the value for that cell and so on and finally we'll again divide uh, we can do the normalization at the very end just like uh, the last the last two steps here so that's document at a time scoring okay it's uh, is this clear now if uh, it was not clear last time Any questions about this? Uh, no, sir. This time it's clear. Okay, good. So 